Okay, so we'll start off by doing the uh, basics. Um, and that would be simply to measure the length of a piece of wire. So what I'm going to start off with is um, my 50 ohm coaxial cable. Um, I have it correctly terminated at the moment and you'll see why um, shortly as to why I've done that. Um, but before we start, what is our setup going to be for the Agilent um, arbitrary waveform generator? So we need to output a pulse. Um, it needs to be quite narrow and I will explain why this is in more detail later, but suffice to say that um, it needs to be narrower than the time it would take for the pulse to travel down the wire and be reflected back again to um, be detected by the oscilloscope. If it isn't, then obviously your output signal is going to start mixing with your input signal. And I will actually show you what happens when that occurs later on. But for now, let's just go with a very narrow pulse and a relatively slow um, period between them. So what I've done here, as you can see, is I've set up a frequency of 20 kilohertz, which is relatively slow frequency, but it is enough to get a good stable signal on an oscilloscope. Um, I've put out 5 volts um, peak, and I've set the low level to 0 volts. So basically what I'm going to use is what could typically be a TTL output or an output from a microcontroller. Of course, this could be 3.3 volts as well, but the principles are exactly the same. Um, I've set the pulse width to 300 nanoseconds, so it is significantly narrower than the period of the um, pulse, so that we have no chance of it being reflected back on itself before the pulse has gone away. And I've um, reduced the leading and trailing edges of the pulse to 3.3 uh, nanoseconds. Continue. So that's our basic setup for the output of the waveform generator. I've also set it to be uh, a 50 ohm output impedance. Um, I'll put up a little diagram in a short while in the blog um, as an image so that you can see what output impedance has um, in relation to the actual source signal and the rest of the um, setup so that when you see when you put a load on it for instance a length of cable with a terminator and things like that um, Ohm's law at least at DC would come into play and you can see how they would relate to each other in the actual output signal. Um, the rest of the setup is basically um, if I'm going to zoom out here you'll see um, now is I have the cable coming out of the pulse generator and it is fed out through the cable it's just a very short three feet piece of coax goes into my oscilloscope right here and is then displayed on the oscilloscope and as you can see the oscilloscope is set to uh, 10 microseconds per division um, and I've got one two three four five divisions per pulse so that's 50 microseconds and if you do the calculation for 20 kilohertz you'll find that that works out to be 50 microseconds um, right now on the oscilloscope these pulses are really really narrow so they just show up as a single line so what I'll do now is I'll increase the um, time base of the oscilloscope to try and get an actual pulse width so what I've done is um, I'm down to here we go that will do uh, 10 nanoseconds per division now my pulse width as I stated before is 30 nanoseconds so if I just line up the pulse you'll actually see that um, it's one two three divisions okay so we've got 30 nanosecond pulse now as you can see if I slowly reduce this I've got the pulse that I'm sending out and there's absolutely well pretty much nothing else in the picture as far as reflected signals or anything else there's just nothing there the reason for that is because my cable is properly terminated this little thing at the end here is a 50 ohm terminator I've told the waveform generator to have an output impedance of 50 ohms and I have put a 50 ohm cable on so everything is properly matched so there are no reflections now the truth is that there are some funnies going on a little bit so if I actually show you this, you can see right here, uh, yeah, I can't quite get it on the screen at that uh, setting. So if I just use 500 millivolts per division, um, you'll see 
that there is actually a slight negative blip on here. Now that is not um, what you would normally expect on this, but when I remove the termination and continue to do some further explanation, you'll see exactly where that comes in. So what I'll do right now is we put this pulse out. It's showing up on the oscilloscope. I'm going to reduce this down again so that you can see the whole pulse. Okay, so it's um, one volt per division. I've told the pulse generator to output a five volt pulse peak. So we've got one, two, three, four, five divisions. So it's showing me that I have um, five volts. I'm terminated correctly into 50 ohms. The output impedance is 50 ohms. So if you take that in consideration and do the math, you'll come to the conclusion that the waveform generator is actually generating a 10 volt signal um, internally, but it has 50 ohms output and then a 50 ohm load. So with Ohm's law, that's a simple 2 to 1 divider because both sides are 50 and we're looking at the middle of it. So we have a 5 volt pulse on the output. Now watch what happens when I remove the 50 ohm termination off the end of here. Look at this scope while I do this. All right, you see that? I'm just pushing it on and off. Right where that little dip is, right here, okay, remember we saw that before. I increased this resolution a little bit, you'll see it more. Right there, okay, there's that little dip. And as I pull off this termination, you'll see that that actually turns into a massive positive pulse. I haven't changed the output frequency. I haven't changed the pulse width. So what's happening? All right, there's a little bit of noise at the end there as well, which is here, which is due to terminations um, and other um, potential issues with the basic setup. Okay, ringing, bit of inductance, things like that. But the primary thing that you're seeing here is this massive pulse, and it's almost the exact same height as the signal that's being output. But what's even more interesting is I've now taken off the 50 ohm load. So if you think about that with Ohm's law, all right, you've got 10 volts coming in internally on the signal generator, a 50 ohm output impedance, a 50 ohm load, which is now in my hand, not connected to the cable, but my output is still showing 5 volts. What's wrong with that picture? All right, remember I told you in the health warning, you're going to have a few things blow your mind as far as Ohm's law and what's actually happening here. So how do we work out now, all right, accepting the fact that because I've taken the termination off, I've now got this um, pulse being reflected back on the cable, all right? And if you think about it, with a sensitive enough oscilloscope, even with my termination connected, all right, so it's back, there are some reflections. And the reason for that is because the output impedance is 50 ohms. This terminator is probably not exactly 50 ohms. We'll get more into that as we start looking at how to characterize um, the impedance of the cable because I have a few different cables to look at and we'll go from there. But for now, let's just focus back on measuring the length of the cable. Okay, so let's just take this terminator back off. There's our pulse again. Let's just bring this down and let's increase our time base as much as we can. All right, so just reasonably there. So here we go. Um, a little bit more, bring it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the cursors on on the oscilloscope so that we can make some measurements just to be a little more accurate in what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same point on the waveform from here to here. So it's the rising edge and as it crosses the center line. So if I just adjust cursor 1 and move it across to where it's touching the center line. And it doesn't really matter where you do this on the waveform as long as you do it uh, relatively at the same point on both rising edges of the waveform. So we'll put that one there. We'll go to cursor B and we'll move across and set this one. And what we basically have here is 64.8 nanoseconds. All right, my little measurement thing here is telling me the delta between the two. So that's 64.8. And if you look at this, it's five nanoseconds per division. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 divisions just about. So it's not quite exactly the 13 divisions, but using the cursors allows you to do a much more accurate measurement. 
So we have 64.8 nanoseconds. So how do we use that information to figure out how long this piece of wire is? Now, obviously right here, if I just can I zoom out anymore, nope. All right, I've got this coil of wire. Now I can simply put a ruler to it and measure it, which I actually have done. I did that after I did my first calculation, but I have consequently done that. And the little piece of paper, which I'm not letting you see right now, tells me how long this cable is. But just using the math alone, let's go and figure this out. So I'm just going to go from the video now and return back to the um, blog, and we're going to do it on a uh, piece of paper with Excel. So I'm just going to capture this image off the oscilloscope using my um, custom software that I wrote just so that I can get it into the um, blog entry a little easier. So I'm just going to grab that. Okay, I now have that so I can just repeat it and we'll come back to do some more investigation in a moment.